The Weekly Feed, I'm Kyle Meredith, and I'm sitting next to Courtney Barnett here at Bonnaroo 2015. It is so great to meet you. Thanks. Yeah, uh, it's. I, th I think we're all become big fans here in the last couple years, especially with the uh, the record. I would say the new record, but you're saying the first record, properly. Whatever. I just say that it's my third release, really. Okay. So all to, right. Everyone has a different idea. Well, anyway, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how are you dealing with all this, too? Are you like, is is the throat getting to you and everything? Are you having any of those issues playing night after night after night? Uh, yeah, kind of. Like every like singing your guts out every night yeah. kind of wears your voice down a little bit. Because it doesn't seem like when you're when you're deciding that you want to be a rock star or whatever that you can, you can take that into account. So now that you're out here, it's almost yeah. like rolling with it in progress or yeah, I guess. something, isn't it? I, I never like learn how to sing uh, properly, obviously. So um, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think that's why it works. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's good. That's all right. <laughs> Do you read your reviews? Yeah, sometimes. Do you read all the things? I, Do you take them to heart? I mean, uh, no, people are only saying the nice things, by the way, so it seems like it'd be all right. Yeah, I, I, I kind of, um, I used to read everything, and then I, and then I got over it. I was like, yeah, because, yeah, I think for every like one bad review, you know, there's however many others, but the bad one. Hurts That's the one that sticks with you, yeah, right? Yeah, so I just there's this line that I keep seeing when people talk about you, and 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 to me it almost seems backhanded when they call you an unlikely success. And I, I get what they're saying, you know, you're not writing Nickelback songs, or thank God, or something like that. But but does does that, does that ever get to you when they're oh you're an unlikely success? Like how could she have done this? The world was against her. Yeah, no, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I think like one person starts saying something and then everyone says it. Um, it's lazy journalism. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just don't take it to heart, I guess. Yeah. I guess it's kind of a compliment in a way. Well, they're all cheering for you. Who knows? They're all, a lot of them, of course, they, they concentrate on your lyrics from the get-go. That's, that's the one thing that, the first thing that stands out with you. When you're writing those, when, I guess when you're done with those, do you ever see them as a punchline? Do you see your lyrics as a punchline, or is it always a serious story? Because, you know, again, I, the way I can read it, it's almost like they're saying, these are so cute, and I laugh <laughs> at these, you know? They're laughing at a hardship if you with an asthma problem or whatever, yeah. you know? And it becomes, do you ever see it as a punchline, what you're writing? Um, Even unintentionally? No, nah, not, not really a punchline. I think, I think it's more just, um, trying to find the humor in like in those worse slightly worse situations than yeah. normal um, so I'm not really trying to be funny I'm just kind of trying to be light-hearted right or you know trying to flip a situation around um, to get a kind of different perspective so um, yeah <laughs> well then with your lyrics how hard do you work on them to I guess not be cliche you don't have a song that says I love you four times in the chorus or something like that. And I'm generalizing, of course. Yeah. But, and that is something, that is something really unique about your songwriting. That what makes you, one of the things that makes you amazing is your style of lyrics. Do you have to work on them so hard? Does it ever get to you where you write something and you go, I can't sing that? Yeah. That's too simple. Or, or whatever it might be. Yeah, I, I write a lot, like I, I, I cull a lot out. And um, I think it's good to do that anyway, because yeah. you kind of, you just kind of spew ideas out and then and then you figure out what's good and I don't know I normally I have like a cringe rule you know if I if I cringe at any of my lyrics and they they gotta go because chances are it'll only get worse but what happens if it's like this, the, the most catchiest thing that you've ever written does that matter does that factor into it you're like oh that's so that's so corny but well yeah I guess bits of person are best for like that which, but I think I think you just gotta take it as it comes. Like I, when I wrote the chorus for that song, I was like, "This is pretty dumb." Yeah. But um. But it stands out so good. You know? Yeah. It's, well. It's, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's the, uh, the the belief behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Dead Fox is of course a really strong song, and you're getting into worldly issues on this. Um, I don't know, in, in environmental issues. I, I yeah. guess is what's going on there. Can you see yourself writing more like that? Uh, calling certain things out, do you, are you, do you do that to try to draw the attention or is this just what's on your mind because I mean I think it's great that you're doing it so yeah. I'm kind of hoping for more as yeah. a fan. I think um, 
it's um I guess it's kind of intentional but not like uh, you know didactic to try and tell people what to do or what to think I think that um, I've always kind of it's just stuff that I think about so it, it ends up in the songs and um, you know most of my songs I think um, I pass on like some sort of kind of like-minded kind of right. general message um, maybe subtle but but yeah it'll definitely um, that's the kind of person I am yeah. so I mean you, you could know, get to that point where, where, where you see something in the world that you are so angry at whether it be political or, or not that you have that opportunity I mean yeah. and so many artists the greatest rock songs of all time have you know touched upon that stuff and you know yeah. and you have to make that decision like do I say that to a fan base who might not agree with me, or, or do I keep it to myself? Yeah, well, I think you should say what you believe in. Yeah. Um, but I don't say it because I have some sort of position of There's power. no agenda. Yeah. yeah. I don't, like, I don't think I have that position. I think that my songs are still quite personal, so all I'm doing is passing along a personal, um, you know, message, and people take it however they take it. Hopefully... You know, hopefully it um, touches some people who don't think that way. Or, right. You know what I mean? Like, hopefully it, it subtly changes some people's uh, perspectives on the world. You ever think about doing another kind of writing, books, something like that? Yeah. Another style of writing? Are you, are you going to try tackle that? Yeah, oh, I write, I like write heaps of um, short stories and stuff, so I take heaps of photos and draw heaps of pictures. So. I mean, you, you're always with the camera. You, I'm glad you found it. You lost it the other day. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's nice. Well, I didn't. I thought I lost it, yeah. but it was just... I mean, even yeah. like a photo book, I, I, I wonder if that's on the way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, years down the track, you got to sure. collect the photos. Keep yourself interested in this whole game. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Courtney, it is so great to talk to you. Cheers. I really appreciate it. Me. And congratulations on the new record. Thank you. Record number three. All right. <laughs> it's the Weekly Feed, Courtney Barnett. Mm -hmm.